Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP video. In this video, we are continuing our little mini series of the Learn Stats module. Yeah, woo! Learn Stats module. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you gotta get yourself some JASP 0.18.1, the Hotfix 2 0.18 that introduced the, drum roll please, data editor. So they made some fixes to the data editor and they officially launched the Learn Stats module, which is what we are going to continue with today. And in our continuing with this today, we're going to talk about standard error. Look at that, standard error. So we just, in the previous video, looked at the central limit theorem, how a sample of means comes together to form a parent distribution that is either normally distributed or uniformly distributed. And now we need to talk about where the differences come in, why we make mistakes, why there is a sampling distribution of means. And that is because we're always sampling from a population and standard errors tells us how precise we were when we get there. So of course, if you are not familiar with a standard error, it is the standard deviation of your distribution divided by the square root of how many values that you had in that distribution. And I wonder if we are going to get that in some explanatory text in some future update. So I've opened up here the standard error function of the Learn Stats module. Now, if you're not familiar with where to add the Learn Stats module, fret no, no fretting. You just add it through this plus sign here. All of the modules come pre-installed. You just got to add them to your top bar by clicking the button, and that'll give you access to all of these. Stay tuned for future videos on all the rest of these. Okay, so to show this, again, I'm going to give an overview of all of these options and instructions and also talk about the statistics and the concepts behind these uh, things that are in display, just in case you want to use these in your teaching. So if you use JASP in your teaching, but also a strong, a strong interactive way to learn statistics and see what happens when you change these kinds of parameters. So in a, I mentioned in a future update because the show explanatory text checkbox is not clickable. It's grayed out here. And unfortunately, same thing is for the uh, JASP help. They have not populated this information yet. So more changes are coming. They removed the beta uh, from my overview video because that was not recorded with the 0.1 hotfix. That was recorded when the Learn Stats module was added to 0.18. It just wasn't announced. So they removed the yellow warning, which was, hey, this is in beta. There might be some funkiness. So just bear with that if you want to use this for your teaching, but want to wait for the explanatory text to be something that appears in the results window here. I think that's fine. You can at least get the overview here. I kind of know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I kind of know. No, I'm kidding. I, I This is what I teach all the time. And I might just bring this into my classroom next year, which is kind of fun, really, or even in a couple of weeks uh, when or by the time this goes out, when I'm actually talking about normal distributions and z-scores and why standard errors are so important. All right, let's jump into this. Uh, somebody might comment. Video starts here <laughs> at this time code. OK, so standard error, we get uh, a couple of things by default. I'll go through each of these collapsible windows or menus one at a time. So here we have um, our parent distribution and then a set of samples and then the sampling distribution of the mean. Looks fairly similar if you watched my video on the central limit theorem function of this same module, which is probably the one that previously came out on the channel. So it looks very similar. Two bits of information have been added to each of these graphs, each of these histograms, each of these distribution plots. Or I call them graphs, plots, right? Um, we have now the standard deviation, okay? And we now have the standard error. Those are the two bits of information that have been added. Two bits of uh, what we'll call them visual cues. How are the standard deviation color to show the general spread of the distribution? And I got to say, the y-axis on this is, leaves, I don't know, a little, or the x-axis, I should say, leaves a little to be desired. But of course, it is uh, 1.17. Let's just take this one. 1.17 around the mean of negative point. Uh, one negative 0 0.14. So that's here. And so it's not going to line up directly over that. But be that as it may, it's fine. And then we get the standard error represented by a little pink bar here. So we've got the standard deviation added in purple represented by a bar to show you the spread. But here's what I mean. Like that is that going up? I feel like I'm going to hit the bar right here. So a little bit of lineup needed a little bit of lineup because that's just going up. I, I, I think it cro crosses one about there. That's I don't know, maybe y'all maybe y'all see differently, but this feels like an ash line experiment to me. <laughs> and then we have the standard error of 0.21. Okay, so we're going to show parent distribution. We can set our mean and standard deviation for that. We're in the standard normal of 0, 1, and that's the parent distribution that you see here. Mean is represented by a vertical bar going down to zero. And then again, the horizontal purple bar for our standard deviation. 
we can do uniform or skewed. So I'll show you what the uniform looks like for just the parent distribution. Again, when instead of uh, a standard deviation, you use range because a uniform distribution is just a big old block. And so the standard deviation for this uniform distribution is 0.29 with a range of one, uh, negative 0.5 and positive 0.5 on either side to show you that this is a range of one around a central point of zero. And then we also have skewed. So we go back to standard deviation or zero one standard deviation. And then we can just change the direction of the skew of left or right where the tail is on the distribution. Remember, uh, the skew direction is the where the tail is. Okay, so here we have our mean of zero and our standard deviation of one that doesn't change, although it kind of looks like it lines up a little bit more. And then we have low skew, medium skew, which is just going to stretch out the tail here a little bit more. And then a high skew. These probably have set skewness and kurtosis values associated with them. So just be aware of that. And every time I change the skew, it resamples our distribution. Nothing changes about the standard deviation and mean, though. It does change where our median is, and it does change uh, the shape of the value. And it's going to ultimately change um, what values are um, sampled, which will change our standard deviation and our uh, standard error. But because of the central limit theorem, it's not really going to change our uh, sampling distribution of the mean. So that's the cool thing about skewness. When you get a number of samples, it works out. So I'm gonna change this back to not skewed. I'm gonna change it back to normal because it's easier to work with. Okay, so let's talk about sample options. Again, what you will see here is uh, just the same kind of setup as the central limit theorem function, right? These options are literally the same. Now, by default, it's just gonna show the first seven samples as to not make your computer explode because, you know, computers have a differing set of capabilities in their com computation power. Of course, they can compute far better than our brains can, but they can get bogged down when they have to do all of these computations. So what will end up what you'll end up seeing is the first seven and then in this eighth spot here until whatever your total number of samples is. So in each of these cases, we have rug marks, rug marks, show rug marks. These are rug marks here. OK, they're showing the samples that have been drawn 30 times. So these are there are 30 rugs. Now, it probably doesn't look like 30 rugs, and that's because many of them probably overlap. Uh, and so just you're not going to see, right? Uh, you can also not show the samples, but I think I would leave those there, right? So it shows the first seven, but you can do last. You can do a range from like sample 20 to sample 60. I don't know, show the middle 40 uh, samples. And then you can do all. All is going to tax your computer to be able to do that. Um, so by default, they, they set it to 100, but you can change this to 1,000 and, you know, run with it. Um, like I said in the last video, I'm not entirely sure what C does. Um, maybe it has to do with values on the X axis. Uh, that it uh, pulls from. I'm not, uh, I haven't really seen a change when I change this value. Um, but now that we have numbers on here, I can probably see those a little bit better. So if I set my C to 10, yeah, okay, it did change values. So the standard deviation on sample number three was like one or closer to one. And now it's 0.88. So seed does change something and I'm not entirely sure what it changes. This must be a, a vocab thing that I have not come across in my statistical uh, learning. Uh, so if somebody has a comment, please let me know what seed is down in the comments below, as I said in my previous video. Okay, yeah, so here we go. Sample number uh, sample number three, set the seed back to one, and my standard deviation is back to one. Oh, okay, all right, well, we'll see what happens. Okay, so like I said, for each of these samples, you get the visual clues for standard deviation and standard errors uh, on a mean. Now, these are plus or minus. Both of these values are plus or minus. And as I said, standard error and standard deviation are connected via the sample itself. So standard deviation, or the standard error is the standard deviation 1.17, divided by the square root of n. And in each of these samples, we have 30. So that is 1.17 divided by the square root of 30. That yields the standard error of 0.21. So what does each of these things tell us for each of these samples? Well, for one thing, we have values of our x variable, whatever that x variable is. We've plotted them with these rug marks. And then we've created a frequency distribution, a histogram, for the count of each of these. So we have a number of values less than zero here, but um, not less than negative one, okay? And so there are, you know, maybe seven of them. I'm not entirely sure where that bar goes, six or seven, something like that, right? So there are seven values of them. And so when we do all of these values, whatever they are between negative three and positive two, we add them all up and we divide them by 30. We get a mean of negative, point, uh, negative 0 0.14, okay? So that's our mean. And then we can calculate the standard deviation by calculating the variance. So how far away each of these values are from our newly calculated mean. And then we take the square root of that and we get 1.17. So that tells us the average distance away that each of these rug marks are from negative 0.14 is a little more than one, right? So, and you can see that, yeah, the average distance does seem to be spread out quite a bit. And this tells you that the bar itself is pretty wide. So that tells you that, that, that this spread, this variability is quite big. And you can compare it to another sample down here where our standard deviation is 0.72 and the bar is less wide, 
right? The horizontal bar is less wide. That is, of course, going to impact our standard error. So if we have a wider distribution, a more dispersed distribution, then this sample mean is probably not going to be as accurate as my parameter space or my parent distribution. So this, uh, we need to find out how precise our estimation of this mean is zero, right? So is how precise is negative 0.14? Well, it's point plus or minus 0.21. We were, we were so close. We were within a 0.21 space, right? And so that's this width here. This tells us how precise we were. And then we would plot that um, if we were to make a bar graph, those would be our plus or minus, uh, our top and our bottom error bars on our either, you know, our dots on our, our scatter plot or the lines on our bar graphs. Now, if we go back and compare sample one to sample four here, we have a mean of 0.2, which is, a, is about the same as our negative 0.14. Okay, it's a difference of 0.06, right? But importantly here, our standard deviation is 0.72. So three quarters of a standard deviation is the average distance that any one value in these rug marks here are away from our mean of 0.20. That means our standard error is 0.13, which is not necessarily half of 0.21. It's almost there. It's probably, we'll, we'll call it uh, three quarters uh, less, right? 0.13. So it's a smaller spread here, but that means we were more precise in the sampling, or at least the computer was more precise in this sample number four. These 30 people, we'll call them since it's psychology, these 30 people were more appropriately closer to the standard, uh, to the mean that is part of our parent distribution, or at least our theoretical distribution for whatever population that we're talking about. Now, this one's great. Sample number three is great. It says that our mean is 0 0.03. We were really close to one. Our standard deviation is exactly the population parameter. Uh, SD equals theta, right? Lowercase theta. It, like they're equal. They're, I mean, we don't know what the actual value is. We're, we're saying this is 1.00 to infinity, but this might be 1.001 or something like that. So it's not getting rounded, right? But we have the same exact spread as our initial. And this y-axis or x-axis does kind of look like it's going. That looks better to me. I don't know. I'm Maybe visuals here. But so how with our spread here, it just so happens that these 30 observations or these 30 people's measurements were within, on average, one standard deviation to the mean of 0 0.03. Oh, that's, that's actually 1.03, and that's 0 .9, negative 0 0.97. That's true. That's true. But it does kind of look like it lines up visually. I don't know. Uh, that, a little tangent there. So how precise were we with this sample? Like, so just because we got close to zero and just because we got to one, how precise was this specific sample to our population. Well, that is a value of 0.18, right? So there is still some error associated with getting us right there on the zero mean, okay? So that was an overview of what the hell uh, standard error is, right? So let's talk about the sampling distribution. And so that's down here, right? So that tells us the sampling distribution with 100 samples, we get to a mean of 0.02, which is pretty damn close, right? And that means our standard deviation, which is the uh, standard error of the mean itself, right? The sampling distribution of the mean also has a spread. It is expressed in pink to make you draw the parallel here with what standard error actually is. So standard error is the precision of the variance in our mean distribution, our sampling distribution of the mean. That's what the standard error is. How spread out are my means when I sample the means X number of times, 100 times, 1,000 times, 5,000 times? OK, what's this value uh, going to be here? So this is our standard error of the mean. OK, and for each sample, you can find the standard error of the mean by taking the square root, by dividing the uh, square root of how many ends you have. And in this case, it's square root of 100. OK, so that is the sampling distribution of the mean. And of course, you can have the show sampling distribution. You can turn that off and on. If that's off, it should go away. Bye. It's certainly taking its time. Oh, there it goes. Let's put it back. <laughs> Let's put it back. Woo. It'll come back eventually. There we go. It's back again. Same values there. We can superimpose the normal distribution, although I think what they're doing is um, not really drawing the smooth curve. And then, of course, the rug marks down here. Okay. Mm, explanatory text. Co uh, plot options. Colorblind changes the color. I'm not a fan of the pink, but maybe pink is differentiable. Uh, dif differentiatable. That's a word. Uh, from uh, greens. Maybe? I don't know. I don't have colorblindness, so I, I, I'm not entirely sure. But we, you can go to colorblind alt here, which is not the case in the central limit theorem module. And that's changing the standard. Oh, I like that much better. That changes the standard error to blue, just in case somebody has difficulty differentiating pink and. Although uh, although here it doesn't really matter because the um, the mean being a desaturated pink is not conflicting with some yellows. OK, I kind of like that one. I kind of like that one a little bit. But then we got Viridis, ggplot2, and gray. You can look at those if you'd like. You can also change the bin, bin width. By default, it is Sturgis. But they have Scott, Doan, Friedman, Diacorit. 
diaconus, excuse me, and then you can change manual, and then this becomes active here, and you can change your bin, bin width. But we're going to leave it as Sturgis here. All right, so that is how you... Uh, that is what standard error is, um, but that is how you use the standard error function of the learn stats module. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, or other feedback, let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.